Assume for a minute that you could invest money in one of two accounts. The first account would give you a 6% return. The second account would give you an 8% return. Which would you choose? Well, if you're like most people, you would choose the second account since it has the higher rate of return. That seems logical, and it's exactly what we've been conditioned to believe. However, you must consider more than just the rate of return when comparing different investment alternatives. In fact, focusing too much on rates of return limits your ability to see the bigger picture. This can ultimately cause you to make uninformed and ill-advised decisions. In order to make an informed decision, you must consider many questions before reaching a conclusion. Questions like, can you access your money anytime you need to without penalties? Is your money safe? How will your money be taxed? And which alternative will net the biggest return in the end? When first exposed to the infinite banking concept, many people immediately think to themselves, but I can get a higher rate of return. This thought stems from the erroneous assumption that following the infinite banking concept limits your ability to participate in and take advantage of other investment opportunities. But as you're about to discover, that simply is not true. In fact, when done correctly, it can actually improve the results you can receive from other opportunities. The first thing you must remember is that you are the owner of your policy, which is where your money accumulates in the form of cash values. As the owner, you have absolute control over the investment function of that money, which means you can use the money for anything you want. So, let's assume that you had an opportunity to invest $100,000 with a 20% return. You can either do it the traditional way, by taking the money from a savings or investment account, or you can follow the infinite banking concept by borrowing the money from the cash value of your policy. Let's see which method comes out ahead. Under the traditional method, you would earn $20,000 in interest during the year. Assuming you were in a 30% tax bracket, you would have to pay $6,000 in taxes on those earnings, which would leave you with a net yield of $14,000. By following the infinite banking concept, you would earn the same $20,000 in interest during the year. However, as an astute banker, you charge yourself interest of 8% for the money you borrowed from your policy. That means that you must pay interest of $8,000 for the loan, leaving you with a taxable gain of $12,000. At a 30% tax bracket, you would have to pay $3,600 in taxes on those earnings. On the surface, this appears to be a net yield of just $8,400, which would seem worse than the $14,000 achieved using the traditional method. However, you must remember that the interest you paid on the loan went into your policy. So, you must add that $8,000 to the $8,400, which brings the combined total to $16,400. That's $2,400 more than using the traditional method. Plus, with the right policy, you will continue earning dividends in your policy as though you hadn't borrowed the money at all. So, as you can see, becoming your own banker doesn't limit your choices at all. It actually increases them. It enables you to take advantage of the opportunities that come your way and puts you in a better position to capitalize on them. By becoming your own banker, you will soon be in a position to stop supporting the employees and shareholders of other banks and finance companies through all of the interest you're paying to them and instead use that money to support you and your family. Becoming your own banker will prove to be one of the wisest decisions of your lifetime.